issue, but hearing the statistics was definitely a shock. We can all do more to reduce our own food waste, and here with recipe ideas to help us do just that is culinary expert and food stylist Christine Tizard. Welcome to the show. Welcome, Christine. Now, this is something you're quite passionate about. You yes. even develop recipes with food waste in mind. I do. So what are some general sort of tips and advice you can give us to eliminate more food waste? Well, from a household level, I think over shopping is the big one. I mean, I do it too. Yeah. So, it, I mean, I always like to go to the store with a grocery list. But I do something called my fridge first strategy. So before I go shopping, I look in my fridge. I say, what's in there? What needs to be used up? Yes. Cross-reference that with my pantry staples, what's in the freezer, and build my list from there. The second thing is we tend to, um, we're going to the grocery stores, we're getting bags there. Yeah. Plastic is everywhere. So if we start embracing this uh, zero waste packaging thing, then we end up actually cutting down on our waste at home. Like go to the deli counter, bring your own little container, and then buy only what you need for the week. My goodness, really I didn't smart. even know that was an option. That's amazing. Now, we're, you're going to show us what we can do at home. And the first thing yes. you brought us is a banana bread. But what's going to blow everyone's <laughs> mind is that you've used the whole banana yep. in this banana bread. Even yep. the peel. <laughs> yeah. I know. Even the peel. So why is eating the banana peel something that we should so, consider more often? Oh, as I'm trying to take this off. Uh, so this is my banana bread called uh, This Bread is Bananas. <laughs> and um, it uses the whole banana. So a lot of the things we forget is that there's still nutrition nutritional value in stems, peels, things like this. So mm -hmm. banana peels are full of potassium, full of fiber, both insol insoluble and soluble, plus you get some B vitamins in there and vitamin A. So why not eat the peel? Okay, well, with that all in mind, how come the whole audience gasped and we did too? <laughs> like, why don't we know about this? Yeah. Has anyone here eaten a banana peel? <laughs> The banana peels are bitter and astringent. So okay. it's not necessarily something that we would just chomp on. However, if I take the peels and I put them in boiling water for five minutes, some of that astringency starts to seep out. Then I take the peels, I puree the peels with the banana in my wet ingredients and throw them in the banana bread. Okay, so the, can you taste, you said that it's astringent and a little bitter, so can you taste it in the bread? I, you, I'll let you me, know. Tell but, me, and be okay. honest, I actually, I don't think it affects the flavor at all. If anything, I think it tastes, think, I think it tastes a little bit more like banana, and it, you get a dense, moist texture. It's almost like a banana There's bread no pudding. There's no difference. No difference. Okay, he, here's the thing though. When, yes, that deserves a clap. But when I, when I make banana bread, I'm using bananas that are, like, have turned dark brown, dark black, and then I'm yes. putting them in the freezer. Exactly. Is that banana peel still okay to use? So, banana peels that are still spotty, starting to go brown, still totally you can use. I mean, we tend to buy bananas that are a little bit more green, like this at the grocery store. We put them out on the counter, we wait mm -hmm. until they're perfectly ripe, and then we eat them. But you can also put them in the fridge. The peels will start to go spotty, but the inside of the banana is still good. Plus, they're super freezer friendly. Okay, the next thing we're gonna move on to are stems, because I think a lot of us have mm -hmm. end up throwing out a lot of broccoli stems and parsley stems. Yes. So you've come up with something. What do you do? So I, I've been eating so many stems, I can't even tell you. Um, <laughs> I love stems because there is still as much nutritional value in your stems as there are in their pretty tops. So for example, the stems from uh, parsley, mm -hmm. cilantro. These stems I use for braising. I use them in soups, stews, and stocks. But what I've also been doing is I chop them really fine, the same as you would a chive, and I throw them in my mm, salads for a crispy great crunch. Idea. It's great. That's great. Uh, the other thing is we have the larger stems, like the ones you get on cauliflower, broccoli. These I love because these can easily be diced up or thinly sliced and turned into a coleslaw like I brought here today, because so I love smart. coleslaws. And then you have the stems of leafy bitter greens. So this is Swiss chard. You can see how beautiful it is. A lot of people tend to just use the greens and don't know what to do with these. So what I like to do is chop them up. Once again, you can throw them in a salad. They're also beautifully sauteed with olive oil, yeah. garlic, or used in a super stew. Love it. So you mentioned using the broccoli stems in a col uh, uh, coleslaw. Yes. And you've also added like a duck to it. Why is, why is duck a good yeah. option? So coleslaw to me is like way more than a side. I just love coleslaws. I never get bored of them. And it's because you can add so many different things to a coleslaw. And mm. coleslaw tends to get better after it's been 
it's sitting around in its vinaigrette yeah. for a while. So it's the perfect thing for leftover protein, like leftover roast chicken, leftover duck. Also, I mean, I like to eat out every now and then, and sometimes I order too much. Like, one of my favorite things is Peking duck. So if I happen to go out to a restaurant, order it, I bring it home, the next day I can have it on top of an Asian-inspired slaw. It's really smart. My father-in-law recently added pickle juice to his coleslaw <laughs> uh, dressing recipe, and it blew my mind. What are your tips for your not-so-creamy coleslaw uh, dressing? Well, my not so creamy coleslaw dressing, I just, I don't like mayo based dressings. This is a more vinaigrette style dressing. So this would be, a, a pickle juice would be a perfect addition to this. But people don't throw out your pickle juice. <laughs> you, you can, you can use, okay, my favorite thing to do with pickle juice is like, you don't have fancy olives at home, but you want to make a martini, you throw <gasps> some pickle juice in there. Oh, yeah. Right? Good. But okay. also pickle juice is great for vinaigrettes. It's great for marinades. If you want that little bit of dill pickle flavor, I also brine my chicken in it and then I have like dill pickle flavored chicken. It's Genius. great. Genius. Genius, love it. Now the next fi and final thing is something that Jess has done before, but I haven't, which is you keep the rinds from your Parmesan, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know, what do you do with it? So, <laughs> <laughs> Parm rinds, uh, I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but it's been kind of like a hot commodity because I've noticed that my grocery store now starts to sell it in packages and you have to pay for it. I just remember going and asking the deli for it for free, but now mm -hmm. you can buy them because they're so full of flavor. You can use them in soups, stews, or tomato sauces to bring in that Parmesan flavor into, into what you're eating. That's exactly what I do. I just throw a rind into any sort of soup I'm making, but you've taken it a step further and actually made a stock out of yes. it. Yes, so this is a Parm broth, which is really interesting because I'm working on a cookbook about food waste, and through all my research, I came across this recipe for Parm broth, and I'm like, how did I not, know? how do we not know about this? So. It's the same as you would make any other broth, but instead of using bones or tons of vegetables, the parm rinds are your mm. base. So you simmer the parm rinds with some ar aromatics, like some celery, some onion, some herbs. Two hours, you have this parm broth that you can use as a base for a soup, a stew, or the minestrone that I brought here today. It's that gorgeous. is so smart. You're helping us use all the things in our fridge. Thank you so much, oh my Christine. God. Recipes, head to our website after the show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.